Well, it never ceases to amaze me where the time goes. It's already early, well, it's still early morning, but it's drifting on. We've nearly got ourselves sorted out. We're gonna go down and help my old mate Les out with some of his bees that I'm helping him manage and he's, he's mentoring me and I'm doing the manual labor, so that seems to work. And we've got to get them ready so they can get moved because they need to move from where they are to somewhere where it's got a bit better foraging. But to do that, we have to give them a bit of a facelift and a bit of an upgrade so they don't all bloom and have a bit of a fall apart when I put them on the new lifter. The lifter that is Les's lifter on my new truck, which by the way, I think I spend as much money, almost as much money fixing it up as it cost me to get the jolly thing. But so stay with me. I hope it all works good. So we, um, I got a few of these old queen excluders that aren't too bad, but I just want to give them a bit of a facelift. So I've fooled assed around, I've held on them with me pliers, I've bloomin' burnt me fingers a few times, I think I've still got a blister on this finger, which is a bit of a worry. So I've come up with a whole other idea. I've just got to hang them up here on me hook, so I can give them a bit of a blast with me, with me bloomin' blowtorch, and they should be all nice and clean and ready for their big adventure in the bee yard. So we'll just light the torch up and give it a bit of a blast. It's ended up a multi-use tool, this thing. <laughs> it's not just for melting frogs. I still remember old poor old Leap Roy quite fondly. <laughs> poor fella. And for all the concerned environmentalists, he wasn't plastic, so it was all good. We didn't do anything to the planet. Wonder if we could hang some, we could hang a bit of bread up there and make toast as well, couldn't we? <laughs> Shit! Oh no, I lost me wire. <laughs> you don't have to get it perfectly clean. You just got to get it cleaned up a bit, so as in kill all the bugs that might be on there. Not there should be any disease on these ones anyway, because they were pretty, they're coming out of the same spot as we're putting them back in. Oh, maybe you're right, quite the same size. <laughs> At least they won't bounce out. <laughs> Here's a bit more grubby one. Now, if you're doing lots and lots of them that are really mucked up or clogged up, you want to put a bit of a catching pot underneath here, because you can catch all this wax and recycle it. But, we're only just doing these and they're not very dirty. I was doing some the other day, they were quite grubby and I'm catching the wax and stuck it in my wax cleaner upper machine. So just keep that in mind, otherwise you'll have a big pile of muck on the floor and you'll get it on your boots and you'll tramp it into the house and then you'll be in all sorts of strife. Well, depending on whether you, if it's your own house by yourself, it won't bloody matter. But if you've got a wife like me and you trape your wax into the house with your stones and all the bits and pieces, <laughs> anyway, no, she's a beautiful woman. I just get told to clean up my own mess, which is fair enough. So I'm trying to be a good house husband, or a bee husband for that matter. <laughs> Now, just as a little footnote, don't get too carried away with your heat, otherwise you end up blooming, dissolving your jolly little crossbars, which is not very helpful, because I think they might be lead, I suppose. I don't know what they are made of, but anyway, as you can see, just goes kadoom if you get too excited. So back your torch off a little, or don't get, don't get as quite as enthusiastic as the bush bee man. I'll give this last little one a bit of a scrub over, and then we'll tie our load on, and we'll be all good to go. Gosh. Find a bit of rope, tie all this together, hook it on the back of the little bus and off we go.
just another detour. <laughs> Always a detour when you're a beekeeper. We just thought we'd check these swarm traps out on the way to our next destination, so. Hopefully we might have caught a couple, I don't know. It's a bit blooming dry. It feels like we're in the middle of the desert, which is probably because we are. Just sneak over this fence and have a check out what's happened. So we sat these little boxes out here, I don't know, probably three weeks ago, I reckon. Three or four weeks ago, something like that, before it got too crazy hot. We've got a few old frames in there. I think I've shown you that bit, so. Hopefully we've attracted some little natives and we have a few more bees. Looks like we might have got something. What have we got? We got one there. And I reckon we had one coming in. I oh, know that one's yet. They're getting organized. And one pretty busy back here. And one over there that I don't think we were even set up for it. <laughs> but anyway, that's good. Hell, I hope that one over there's got some frames in it. Oh man, <laughs> typical, isn't it? But they look pretty busy. Oh, they've got a bit of honey on board. They've been busy. That's good. They must have had something to forage on, but look at that lot. Oh well, I guess two out of six ain't bad. Two out of three is the song, but you know, you're going to go. Well, it's actually three out of six. Three out of six isn't too shabby, is it? Or well, seven, actually. Three out of seven. Probably doesn't really go together as a song, doesn't it? You know, like, because two out of three ain't bad is meant to be the line, but I don't know. Three out of seven, we'll take that. <laughs> So they're having a bit of a cleaning up time here. I don't reckon they haven't been in there quite as long, but they're looking all right though. Anyway, that's three, that's all right. That's better than nothing. Got a bit of pollen coming in, so they're getting a bit enthusiastic. Plenty of nectar happening. Anyway, on to the real job. Well, this is a real job. It's all about catching bees and helping bees and straightening up the bees, isn't it? <sighs> What's that saying? It's the bee's knees. Anyway, on to the next bit. <laughs> Have bees even got knees? I don't know. If they haven't got knees, that's a very silly bloody saying, isn't it? <laughs> Must be just a nice little native bottle brush with a few of the girls flying around on. You can definitely hear the buzz, it's just a matter of tracking them down. <laughs> Anyway, I just thought I'd wander across here. I thought maybe there might be a swarm sitting under this tree, but you never know, sillier things have happened. But anyway, oh, maybe I'm just trying to avoid putting my bee suit on. <laughs> it feels bloody hot already. But we better get on with it. Otherwise the day will be long since spent and we'll run out of daylight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess now we've got to just untie all this stuff. Went round and round and round in circles, making sure nothing would fall off. Looks like it's all still here, so that's all good. Just got a couple of splits that I want to check out to make sure the, the queen's decided to hatch out and get laying. And then I've got one little newt box here that's like absolutely up to its eyeballs in, in blooming honey and God knows what else. So, well, it was the other week when I was here. So I want to rehouse that into one of these boxes and give them a bit of room to move. And then, <sighs> Then we'll just tidy up some of the rest of the excitement if we get time. Depends how hot we get. Do do do. Do do where we start with untying. We just, it's like we had a wild bull on here. <laughs> it's nothing worse when stuff falls off. You get to your destination and you think, I could have sworn I put a ladder on my trailer somewhere. <laughs> or even worse, one time when we were moving house up to the Riverland, I had all the stuff stacked on board and I had this old wardrobe and I'd filled that full of all the clothes. And I thought that was all good, so I thought that was pretty clever. And I got the door and I locked the door with my key and I put the key in the car and I thought, oh, that'll be excellent. We're driving along and just after sunset, I reckon, and I'm looking in the rear vision mirror and I forgot to actually check whether the back of the wardrobe was nailed together. So that had flapped open and <laughs> clothes and shit flapping everywhere. Far as I know, we didn't lose anything, but I kind of just said to the young lass, well, we're just, I'm just gonna check the load, darling. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> So, as far as I know, we didn't lose any shoes, but we might have. Just remember, if you're stuffing your wardrobe full of stuff, remember to check the back. 
handy hints from the bush bee man. Things to remember when you're traveling. Uh, what's that sign? I quite often have a laugh when it says, survive the journey. And I'm usually thinking, I you hope know, the bloody crap that I've got tied on survives the journey. Oh, the poor wife's giving up on me now. <laughs> some of these ladies are a little bit excitable, so we'll probably put some gloves on, I think. Because they haven't been, they haven't been played with for a little while. So I'd rather not get any bee, more bee stings than I have to. Actually, I should put an L on these because I'm going to try and have different gloves for different bits now that I'm starting to get a few more different hives around the place. So as you uh, don't, at least you only contaminate one little section rather than, you know, cross contamination because you don't want to carry diseases from one hive to the next. So it's all relative to how many bee boxes you've got, I guess, though, isn't it? <laughs> we're, trying to, we're trying to implement a bit of, what do they call that when it's all... Oh, oh. Anyway, isolation, but it's not really isolation. It's called, uh, you know, more about having different different piles of bees. So I've got, you know, these ones, and then I'm going to have the ones at home. And then I've got some that are, that are with me. Other mate that's got some bees that are going to be together. So when we do a load, we'll just take that particular load to the next site and keep them all together. And then we can monitor how they grow and breed and, and hopefully keep the diseases contained. It is called something, but I can't think what the word is, and my brain's gone meltdown. So this little box here in the corner was obviously another swarm box, and the lasses went in there, and there was only one frame in the corner. So they got in here and they made all their frames, all their brood this way across. And so that was rather interesting. So a little while ago, I've come down and I've pulled it all out, and I've rubber banded it to some frames. But now today I'd just like to pull it apart properly and shake all the bees down and make them start afresh. So we'll have a nice fresh brood box. They can rear out the brood at the top above the queen excluder and then we'll come back and we'll take that away and figure out getting it a nice new start. We'll just ease the lid up, poke a little bit of smoke under these there to calm everybody down a bit or at least distract them a bit. And we'll pop our lid back over here and then we're gonna have a bit of a look what's happened. Oh. Because I think we've managed to upset them just a little bit. <laughs> right, so we're just going to prise this super, this box off, our brood box. Prise that off and I'm going to sit it on the lid. And then we're going to shake all the bees inside of here. That's the plan. <laughs> right. Oh, <yeah. laughs> Just have a bit of a look in here, make sure this isn't all full of stuff. I think I shook all this out last time I was here, so it should be all right. They're trying to get rid of the rubber bands. They've got one out here, one halfway out, one third of the way out, and they're dragging that out. So we hope, give them a bit of a hand, we'll get that out of the way for them. And get this one, one out of there, there's one over the other side. Just tell your kids to look away for a minute. I found myself a petrified mouse. I don't think she got very far. The lady said, get out, get out, get out. The poor little thing. But anyway, that'll teach you to find a warm spot. <laughs> Right, yeah, that all looks reasonably clean. And we'll just pop this, pop this new, this is going to be our new brood box. Yeah, what we want to do is clean up this mess. Right, so we'll swing that around there. <laughs> That'll be where we'll put the shaped frames. Let's see if we can get one out. Here we go. Read all of that out of there. I hope I haven't killed the queen in all this excitement. Ah, oh, that'd be right, wouldn't it? The joys of rehousing. I hope there's some brood here somewhere. Otherwise, that's going to be a bummer. Yep, we've got some brood getting laid, so that's good. Oh, lucky. I don't think we really want this ugly looking frames down the bottom, so we'll make them work a bit hard and go up and get it. I'm thinking she's probably hiding in the roof of the box. Anyway, we'll smoke them out of there in a minute. At least she's still in here, because you can see where she's been. Even if I can't find her. It was a bit of a, it was a bit of an excitement, it was. I don't think they're impressed at all. I think being unimpressed is an understatement for sure. Put that one in there, at least they'll be used to that smell. <laughs> Wonder where the boss woman is. Do 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 John. 
We can't find her, it's a problem. Uh, well, it's not really, but at least she's in here. I think she might be in this roof, I reckon. I just want to give him a bit of smoke because I don't want her to be in this lid, that's all. But a jolly nuisance, you don't want the queen above the queen excluder because then that's no, not a good option. There's a lot of hard work goes on then, they've got to get through the queen excluder to feed the young and oh my goodness me, can create all sorts of drama. Just be a little bit patient, not like I'm normally him. <laughs> I don't think we've increased, we haven't done the population a whole lot of good by blooming trying to rehouse them and get them onto frames that we can actually look at. But, you know, I guess the alternative is that they don't live at all and that would be really bad. So we've got to do what we can because the law says we have to have removable frames so as they can be inspected. And never mind what the law says, it just has to be done because otherwise if you can't inspect your boxes, well, you're in all sorts of strife. Right, I reckon we'll give that another little tap. Looks pretty empty to me. Right, that could be a problem. Got ourselves a little bent bar here. Whew. Keep your eye on your queen excluders for a bent bar. I'll just sit it over here on the workbench. <laughs> Bend that one back down again. As a general rule, she probably wouldn't get so excited to actually squeeze through all of these bits and pieces, but the fact that we're putting all her brood above the queen excluder to try and get the nurse bees to hatch that out and make them start again and be a respectable hive, the last thing you want is an easy access point like that. So that was good spotting. Anyway, as I was doing, we'll put our queen excluder on. We're gonna put our super, which has got our brood on top. The girls are already in there fixing it up because they want to look after their babies. They'll rear all that brood out of there. Then hopefully by that time they've built some new wax on the new foundation and then everything will be a bit more respectable. So that's got that little excitement straightened out. We'll just latch the lid down in case some wild kangaroo comes along here and bumps us over. Hopefully, when we come back in around about a month's time, it'll all be sorted out and they'll all be reorientated downstairs and having a nice productive little hive. You can't just have them doing their own thing, just building anywhere willy nilly. Gotta, they gotta be on frame, so otherwise how are you gonna service them and work them and look at them and inspect them? Anyway, here we are. Now for fun, we've got to go and rehouse a few of these over here. So, oh, golly gosh. Oh, I don't know. At least, at least they're still in the shade a little bit. That's good. 